My name's Josh Beaver, I'm 23 years old. I swim at Nata Wadding Swimming Club under Roland Taylor at the Victorian Institute of Sport and I'm swimming at Rio, the 100 and 200 backstroke. My name's Monique Murphy and I'm an S10 para swimmer and my main event is the 400 freestyle. Growing up in the sport, um, obviously, um, swimming has a rich history in Australia, in Australia and, and throughout the world and basically started squad when I was eight years old. My age group swimming looked a little bit like just making uh, base state finals and, and right up until basically when I was 16 when I took out my first national title. As a kid I had a huge fear of water. I almost drowned twice and once was at the wave pool at Wet n Wild. So pretty bad track record with water but I was an asthmatic so my parents uh, had me swimming with a club when I was six years old and I was always hoping to make a national championships as a kid. I always had dreams of going to an Olympics. Um, so unfortunately it didn't come true. I missed out on nationals by 0.02 for about three years in a row. And then I moved on from swimming. So I missed 2012 uh, by 0.2 of a second. It was difficult to be honest with you and missing out on what was then a dream as an 18 year old boy and not realising what the actual Olympics um, stood for and what, what, where I was in, in terms of swimming. I think the thing that really differentiates for, you know, if you use a team sport like a football or, you know, a sport that competes weekly, you know, you get a chance to redeem yourself within the week. I, I didn't get the uh, result I want, but next week I will. Well, there's no next week, it's a four year wait if you're talking about an Olympics. It was in 2014 and I just started my social work degree and one night I fell from a fifth floor balcony landing on a glass roof. I was taken to hospital and had my foot immediately amputated and I woke a week later from a coma with absolutely no recollection of what had happened. With that accident she also had a number of other injuries so she also has the challenge of not just be missing one leg but also have another leg that um, doesn't have an ACL in it and shoulders that are held together by screws. Getting back into the sport was through rehabilitation initially and it was just about having more mobility in the water and that competitive drive just came back very quickly to push myself and find out what I could accomplish. Off the back of 2015 World Championships after being selected, I decided to make the move to, to Roland Taylor just to, um, I, I felt like I uh, needed to change in my life and change in obviously training environments and made it incredibly easy for me to, to fall in love with what I was doing again and, and really put me in a really great mindset towards uh, 2016. There's a partnership and a role to play and that is my role is to provide the environment, provide the guidance, give that set of eyes, challenge when, need, when they need to be challenged, but also you know, be able to pull them back when they need a little bit of space to, to, so it goes both ways. The coach-swimmer relationship needs to be a tight bond, it needs to be uh, open communication, uh, to speak about concerns, you need to make sure that you're on the same wavelength all the time and working together towards the, the same goals. Rio trials were Really exciting, it was the biggest crowd I have swum in front of. But I did a huge PB in the heats, which was completely unexpected. And my parents were up there watching me and nationals always occurs on the anniversary of my accident. So it's a really emotional time. Uh, it was also my birthday. <laughs> so uh, it was a great birthday present. My time put me number one in the world for this year. I've had you know, the dreams of being able to get on that podium for Rio and I've realised that that's actually a realistic goal now. It's not just a fantasy. I think the greatest part about making the team was uh, after I did some media stuff, I, I got to spend it with my teammates. Rowan crying, the team manager crying, and I thought, oh, this is really, this is something really special, a really great moment to reflect back on it. In the last sort of, I guess, six to 12 months, we've worked really closely with Josh um, and Rowan um, to really hone in on his start in particular um, and also his turns and his underwater skills as well. We've been working very closely with um, Monique and Alex I guess um, with her turns um, and also with her specific event um, making sure that she's as efficient as possible otherwise you know it'd be like riding a bicycle in the wrong gear. The Australian swim team is in uh, amazing hands at the moment. We're in a really great position to both para and uh, able body um, to, to, to go to Rio and definitely exceed expectation of, of the Australian uh, public and I definitely think that there is uh, life after Rio and there is um, an extended swimming career for myself and uh, I definitely don't want to don't want to limit myself to what I can achieve. My first coach in Canberra from Tuggeranong Vikings, um, Jan Murphy, who I'm not related to, he used to always tell us to to aim higher than we 
think we can achieve because if you aim high and you miss that goal by a little bit, it's much better than aiming low and achieving it. So I do have to remind myself of perspective sometimes and my family is great at that. I'll often get on the phone and go, oh, I only did a second PB, I'm so disappointed. And they'll go, two years ago, you were in a coma and we didn't know if you are gonna wake up. So <laughs> Paralympics only comes around once every four years. I've got to make the most of it now.